Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures, this is Steve. Right now I'm in Arizona at Lake Havasu, and the reason I'm here today is because of a story I read in a recent issue of Root Magazine called the Bermuda Triangle of the West. You see here at Lake Havasu, there's a mystery. A mystery almost as old as the lake itself. There have been two planes that have crashed into the lake, and actually there's been more than two planes that have crashed into the lake. There's also a really loud bird near me, so I apologize. Uh, I don't know what this bird is trying to tell me. But there's been two planes that have crashed into the lake and have completely disappeared. There's even a cash reward if you can find the planes. So today we're going to take a look around Lake Havasu and talk about the Bermuda Triangle of the West. Lake Havasu is a large reservoir on the Colorado River, located on the border of Arizona and California, that was formed after the Parker Dam was completed in 1938. Nowadays, the lake is a very popular recreation area, but prior to the 1960s, the area was pretty remote. With all the recent news about the historic drought and the water levels hitting record lows at Lake Powell and Lake Mead, further to the north on the Colorado River, one of the first things you notice here is how full Lake Havasu is. That's because Lake Havasu is a balancing reservoir and never drops below 98% full. So unlike Lake Mead, where a number of things such as shipwrecks, ghost towns, and even bodies have reemerged over the years, all of Lake Havasu's secrets remain underwater. Lake Havasu isn't that deep though, with an average depth of only 35 feet though there are a few spots where it does get much deeper. And while it's big, a lot of people visit here every year. Yet two airplanes have completely disappeared in these waters. At 7 p.m. on August 4th, 1943, a United States Army Pursuit P-40 crashed between the Army's Site-6 airfield, near where I'm standing, and what is now Havasu Landing on the California side of the lake. The plane's engine had caught fire and the pilot had escaped by parachute, landing in the lake. After swimming for about 10 minutes, a motorboat from Site 6 picked up the pilot, but the plane was never found. Because World War II was going on at the time, it didn't get a lot of press and the details of where the plane crashed are somewhat vague. The area between Site 6 and Havasu Landing is pretty massive, so despite extensive searches for the missing plane, I could see how it could go unfound. That just makes the next plane all that more bizarre. On January 2nd, 1960, two brothers from California were flying a war surplus North American AT-6C single-engine fighter over Havasu when the plane's carburetor froze up at 100 feet, causing it to plummet into the lake. There were witnesses to this crash, both on the ground and in another plane. The crash was covered in newspapers of the day. On top of that, a diver went out and found the bodies of both men less than two hours after the crash. It was known exactly where this plane went into the lake. The plane, however, has yet to be found. As we take a look around the lake, I wanted to point out these miniature lighthouses that you could find all around Lake Havasu. Supposedly there are 28 of them all around the lake, and apparently Lake Havasu City has more lighthouses than any other city in the United States. To get a closer look, we're going to head out on the water, and in order to do that, we're going to take the cheapest boat trip you can get on Lake Havasu, the $4 ferry to the casino. Obviously we aren't going to find anything on this boat, but this 20 minute ride across the lake really gives you a perspective on just how vast Lake Havasu is. Aside from the missing plains, the town of Liverpool Landing is somewhere under this water as well. In order to find the missing planes now, you'd probably need some sort of specialized equipment. You know, provided they haven't been warped into another dimension or something. Near where I'm standing in 2022, the Bureau of Land Management purposely sunk 
a Vietnam era A6 Avenger in order for it to become a fish habitat. And that plane is completely invisible above the water now. I flew the drone over where it's at, I've looked for it from the shore, and there is no sign of it. Now imagine an 80 year old plane where we have no idea where it crashed. And you can just imagine how hard it is to find these missing planes. With the mystery of the missing planes still unsolved, in 2014, the Lake Havasu Convention and Visitors Bureau put up a thousand dollar reward to anyone who finds either of the planes. Honestly, unless you stumble upon one by accident, my guess is a search for these planes is going to cost you a lot more than a thousand dollars. But really, Solving the mystery that Root Magazine called the Bermuda Triangle of the West is the real reward. Lake Havasu is big, but it's still amazing to think that with all the people that come here every year for boating, swimming, and even scuba diving, these plane crashes have still not been found. Well, we're not going to be collecting any rewards today either, but thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and we'll see you next week.